Let's set the stage. Jesus of Nazareth was a poor carpenter who had been working in his father's carpentry shop for around 30 years. Despite his age, he was still not married, something that was heavily frowned upon in Jewish culture. Even worse, virtually all of his contemporaries believed that he was born from an adulterous affair, as evidenced by people's accusations. As a result, Jesus would have automatically been cast as a pariah in the eyes of Jewish society. This very man suddenly appears before the Jewish people proclaiming radical statements like, quote, I and the Father are one, unquote, and I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me, unquote. Further, he denounces the holy men of his day, calling them whitewashed tombs and children of Satan, all the while dining with tax collectors and prostitutes. Who was this man? In the eyes of the Jews, he was a liar. In the eyes of his family, he was a lunatic. However, in the eyes of those who know him, he is Lord. Crafted by the renowned British scholar and author C.S. Lewis, this famous liar, lunatic, or Lord trilemma serves as a basis for examining the identity of Jesus. Quote, A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would either be a lunatic, on the level with a man who says he is a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You can shut him up for a fool, you can spit at him and kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to." Unquote. In this month of December, as nativity scenes are set up all across the globe, I want to narrow in upon the last of the trilemma, Lord. Who is the person of the Messiah? To answer that question, we must go back to the garden, the original model for the entirety of creation. Our Heavenly Father created humanity with the purpose of experiencing joy and happiness through the center point of his heavenly lineage, Adam. With the creation of Eve and their future sacred union, a God-centered lineage would result. However, while they were still in the process of growing to maturity, Adam and Eve fell tarnishing the world with sin. To reverse the process of the fall and to engraft mankind back into his lineage, God sent the second Adam, the substantial body of God, Jesus Christ. He is by essence God in human flesh because he is the physical incarnation of the divine Logos. By virtue of his complete union with God, he carries the same heavenly heart as Heavenly Father, the heart of absolute love. We see the escalation and the culmination of this beautiful display of love in the path of the cross. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus sweated blood and wept in deep anguish due to his unwavering filial love toward his Father. He did not want God to wait any longer for the realization of his kingdom. However, because of Israel's rejection, there was no other option. The King of Kings would have to walk the path of the suffering servant. As a result, he was bludgeoned, spat upon, whipped, tortured, mocked, scorned, and crucified. Despite all of this, his heart toward his enemies did not waver. Quote, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do as recorded in Luke 23, 34. Through this beautiful example of sacrificial love, we witness Christ's heart of total alignment with his heavenly Father. Christ, as the embodiment of the invisible God, is the only being since Adam who came into this world without the curse of original sin. He alone is uniquely qualified to save the fallen human race. He alone is the savior of the world. Thus, our only hope as fallen human beings is to engraft ourselves the true vine for our salvation. However, the Messiah can't just appear without a foundation. If he does, he'll just be killed by Satan. This is why God toiled for 2,000 years before Jesus to create a foundation which his son could stand upon. God immediately began working right after the fall for 2,000 years in order to send one man. Jesus Christ was that man. Upon this foundation, Christ desired to bring the original ideal of God's creation into fulfillment and defeat sin once and for all. He was to create the kingdom of heaven on earth, a moral and sinless society of tranquility and abundance, shepherding all nations through righteous judgment. Christ alone is qualified and capable of bringing this utopic vision into fruition. Thus, this one man, even from a physical perspective, was like us in every respect, is the most valuable man to have ever existed. That one man is worth more than all of them put together. You take mountains and molehills, crickets and clowns, you take everything, every planet, every star, every form of beauty, everything that sings, everything that brings to life, and you put it all in the scale. Then you put Christ on the other side, and He outweighs them all. He outweighs them all.
The person of Christ is the foundation of our hope as Christians. Although falling short day after day, we look to Christ as our example to spread the good news of the kingdom. So this Christmas, although we enjoy the festivities, gifts, and time with family, let us focus on the man behind Christmas. Let us see him for what he truly is, not as a liar or lunatic or just another wise teacher. Rather, let us flock to the Good Shepherd, our Lord and our Savior, for He alone is mighty to save. Have a Merry Christmas.